This is a Sony KDL uh, 40p5650, uh, roughly 2009 TV, uh, out of trash. Uh, I snagged because uh, a quick inspection it makes it look like the panel might actually be in okay shape. So, and uh, that there's a chance that this thing might have some kind of electronic fault in it. I haven't paid it on yet, so let's just get to it. Here comes power. Tick tock. We have a standby LED. Moment of truth. And it seems to be. Alright. Okay. That seems to be working just fine. Okay. Well, we're going to be taking this thing apart anyway because I don't trust a an eight year old TV to be in very good working order. So let's let's get inside. Before we do, though, let's uh, let's just give it a shot at uh, some signal. I've got a HDMI going to my bench PC, and that's looking absolutely fine. Okay. Hey, we're getting we're inside, and this is so typical Sony construction for the time. Uh, Generally, we have super high quality in the paint supplies of Sony's. Uh, we don't have bad caps. This one seems to be mostly Rubicon. As far as the caps go, so they're, they're going to be fine forever. And the same is usually true for main boards. Not usually see bad caps on a Sony. Uh, we have an unheat sink BGA there, which is, uh, you know, enough thermal cycles. That's going to cause you some grief. So, the TV might have some intermittent issue. If the solder joints on that has gone bad, uh, Tikan construction, that board fails, it's just uh, dead. You have to get a new board, but it seems to be in good working order. And we have the, well, we've got the inverter here on the power supply, so that, that's probably going to be in good working order as well. And this is not going to be anything actually smart, this is just going to be a breakout board for the you know, CCFLs going across there. The, these TVs are not edged a little like a computer monitor, they've actually got tubes going across like so. Well, some, some actually even have tubes going that way. In fact, that yeah, this is probably going to be one of those which have the tubes going all the way around like that since we don't have any breakout board on this side. Because usually when you have the tubes which are just sticks which go across like that, you have a board on each side which both, both go to the inverter. But yeah, this thing looks quite fresh. In fact, it looks extremely fresh. There's barely any dust in it. It's almost as if it's been cleaned out. Yeah, there's no dust anywhere, not even in the speakers. Well, very small on the heat in the speakers. But this thing's either been cleaned out or it's been very well kept. And I'm, all, I'm almost betting uh, this thing's been very well kept because, because it's in excellent condition and uh, uh, even the uh, foot is in good condition. It's not... It's not... Uh, yeah, it, it's a bit scratched, but not too bad. Uh, usually a good sign of how well kept the TV is, it's just how much shit there's on the foot. Yeah, this, this one's in decent condition. It just looks like a very well kept TV. Although something I am noticing is that the paint supply is a bit bent and it's not very well supported, so... Yeah, that's not very well supported at all. So we could have some solder joint issues on that. But all in all, this looks like a fresh working Sony. And it's something I know has been an issue on roughly this generation Sony's is uh, the firmware of the digital receiver tends to get corrupted over time. Not sure why but there are firmware updates available to remedy that. So that could be an issue. It could be that uh, you usually see the uh, digital tuner getting extremely sluggish and unusual, unusably slow on them. So I should probably test for that out. But yeah, all in all, this looks like an excellently well-kept TV. I'm surprised. Oh, well, hello there. The screen just flickered black and then it turned into this. And, uh, yeah, that's that's not right. That's not right at all, actually. These colours are all wrong, so... It seems we do have an actual issue going on here. Hmm, that's odd. Perfect picture, but uh, everything's kind of pinkish inverted. Like a bad VGA cord, except we're using HDMI. Hmm, that uh, points towards mainboard. 
looks like main board more than anything else to me. Let's just give it a knock around. Poking the BGA of the main board, no. Changes nothing. Hmm. No means of poking around seems to do anything. Well, I've uh, taken the time to cool all around the TV, uh, cool the main board, the VTCOM board, everything, and I haven't been able to make it reproduce the issue uh, to any extent whatsoever. And uh, indeed, as you can see right now, it's working perfectly fine. Which is a bit cryptic because usually when you have these issues, you can just uh, heat around the board and uh, you will get some results uh, from from at least one BGA, usually, that's the case. But that really doesn't seem to apply to this TV. So what I'm gonna do now is the second uh, most common option, and that's to just uh, reconnect every single connector in the TV, because uh, that, that, that can cause more issue, issues than you would imagine. You know, I just noticed we've got this uh, low voltage cable going across to this uh, breakhead board as well, so might be worth it to actually take the cover off that and see if there's any caps in there, because uh, if we actually have any electronic circuitry on this, uh, these modules are notorious for getting bad caps and just stop causing random issues. Uh, nope, no electrolytics there, although I've actually, I'm quite certain uh, I've seen one of these modules uh, with a bad transformer at some stage. I'm quite certain of that, but uh, yeah, that TV had an entirely different issue, so I don't think we've got that problem going here. So let's just put this back together. And let's not forget the Tikkun board because this has got some interconnects going to the actual panel. And whenever you're dealing with an issue like this where you've just got a, a very hardware looking uh, fault where you, like we've just got a pure color issue uh, with the panel j just basically uh, doing the wrong colors with no other artifacts of any kind, uh, you, you, T-Con is always to be suspected. And T-Con interconnects are not known for being uh, the most reliable pieces of engineering. Uh, these are bullshit to access. Uh, those are not getting disconnected without uh, taking the entire panel apart. What a bother. That's a dumb design. Really dumb design. Oh well. Oh, let's just have a look. I don't know if this cover in case there's something horribly wrong that I doubt it, but uh, it's worth a check. These TCON modules are mm, horribly non serviceable usually. They're just a couple of BGAs. Uh, perhaps a voltage reg or two. I haven't seen voltage regs fail on these. Uh, not, not for this particular model. But uh, failed V regs on. T-cons is not entirely unknown. Not entirely unknown. Ugh, they, they had space for a cooling pad there, but they chose not to install it. That's lovely. We've got a cooling pad for metal instead. For one component and not the actual the main processor. Yeah, there's nothing obviously exploded here. I wouldn't expect that either. Would not expect that. I don't want to have a look at that I see under a microscope. So the joints look a bit dicky. This is rather early lead-free stuff as well. So it could, could have issues. Could indeed have issues. All right, so I've continued my troubleshooting a bit further because sadly that's a... Uh, a little bit of rework we did on the TCON module didn't make any difference. And uh, it's kind of basically come down to a bit of a judgment call. Uh, because I let the TV run for a while, the issue is uh, very intermittent. And uh, what I found to be notable is if I put a plastic bag over the main board, uh, the issue becomes a lot more severe. It gets. Uh, it seems like the TV is dropping the HDMI signal for a second, and sometimes when it does that, uh, it will go into that weird inverted color mode. And uh, <coughs> I could go two routes here. I could either start measuring around everything on this main board, uh, which I've done to some extent. I have measured the capacitors, and they all seem fine. 
and I could continue down that to route of just measuring everything, checking all the voltage rails, doing everything I can to try and figure out how this thing works in order to remedy it. But uh, that's where the judgment call comes in, because we need to consider this is a TV from 2009. Uh, it is from the early days of lead-free soldering, uh, where we know it was shit and prone to failure. And we've got an unheatsink BGA chip uh, which uh, is uh, receiving a giant thermal cycle every time you turn a TV on or off. So uh, it becomes a question of does it make sense to just reflow this thing uh, as a cause of troubleshooting? And uh, I would say that from my experience, uh, yes it does, uh, because I have seen so many TVs of this vintage where just uh, Reflowing this thing even shoddily uh, will repair all kinds of weird, mysterious, odd digital issues with a set. And uh, I have verified that the caps on the board are okay. Uh, it's, uh, I would make a reasonable assumption saying that uh, all the voltage rails on this board are going to be okay. Uh, the voltage rig's not running super hot. It's, it, it's, it's doing quite well, and Sony, in general, tend to do very good uh, ancillary circuitry. Their voltage regs and power supplies uh, tend to be very, very reliable compared to other brands. Uh, and I've also verified uh, that the power supply is in reasonable order. I've checked the caps on that, uh, and I have checked the relay, because I, uh, there's a couple of Sony models which tend to go weird when the mains relay goes bad, but that's not the case. In this case, the re mains relay is doing just fine. So we're going to be reflowing this guy, because that's the path of least resistance, and uh, it's just the simplest further step in troubleshooting this TV. Now, the reason I'm giving this lecture is because I don't want to be branded as one of those guys who just go, Oh, it's for BGA, that's a fault, that's a BGA, that is bad, because it's a BGA, and BGA is a solder joint, you can't see, so the solder joints are bad. Uh, I, I would rather say that uh, I have gone through a relatively rigid process of eliminating other factors which would cause this set to malfunction. So, on we go. I've brought out the big guns for preheating the board. Well, let's just get a bit of flux around here. Quite a lot of it, actually. That should do. Well, let's just heat up the board. I think we might have just bricked this board uh, because if you look closely at uh, four of the solder balls right in the corner of a BGA there they seem to have merged into two and uh, I'd wager uh, that, that could be factory for some uh, big giant grounding pad there but that doesn't really make sense out in the corner of a chip so what I think has happened is, is, since I did the grunty thing and used the big giant heat gun to reflow this thing, uh, what happened was it simply put so much pressure onto the BGA from its airflow that uh, it's actually squished the solder balls by just uh, pushing the chip down onto the board. And uh, yeah... I am almost willing to bet that uh, this board is not going to power on anymore if we put it back into the TV. But uh, we'll give it a go. We will give it a go. Alright, prepare for uh, either horrible disappointment or a horrible bang. Here goes. Yep, TV's entirely dead now. Yep, I have absolutely ruined this board. I uh, tried to uh, rework it very ugly by just kind of mongering the thing around and heating the corner and bending the chip and it's just made everything worse and the board's entirely dead. So this is a lost cause, but I figured, yeah, uh, while well, we've got a ruined board, let's just take the BGA off to see what kind of a pattern we've got under there anyway. There's nothing left to lose.
smoky. Very, very smoky. Oh, there you go. That's for the underside of a BGA on a Sony A1641B31-A motherboard looks like. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Oi! How are we sold my BGA on my TV? It doesn't work! And what's up with that?